Hey guys, welcome back to Caftan in the Kitchen, number 19. Now this little number that I'm wearing today with my Ugg slippers is a little summery, but it's blue and white. It's the perfect caftan to make a dish for Hanukkah. Happy early Hanukkah, everybody. So today we are gonna make my favorite Jewish dish, potato knish. I know, I'm very excited. I just got chills, I got knish chills. It's been a while since I got chills on something. Okay, so we're gonna start at the stove and I have one Idaho or russet potato that I chopped up into kind of small pieces. Okay, so we're gonna put that on, bring it to a boil. I have about an inch of water above the potatoes. So we'll get that going. And then I have a, a nonstick saute pan here and I have one onion chopped. So, you know, what's cool about making um, potato canache and adding a little bit of olive oil is that you can kind of put anything you want in the filling. I mean, the bottom line is it's, it's a potato encrusted with the dough, right? And you can put onion, which is very traditional. You could put spinach, you could put bacon, or you can really put anything you want. You know, whatever you want to put in your mashed potatoes would work, but I'm gonna go with just the traditional canache with um, sauteed onion and uh, potato. Okay, so we want to cook these and get them nice and soft and a little bit caramelized, but not too dark. And to that, I'll add some nice kosher salt and pepper. And again, you can add any other seasonings you like to this. But I'm still, I'm gonna go just straight up traditional. Because Parker, um, never seen a knish being made and that's number one and he's only had like one or two in his life right yeah so the first time okay well you know so i grew up in great neck i say talk about it all mm -hmm. the time it was a really cool town to grow up in um it was one of those towns that people from surrounding towns would come to on saturdays and um other days of the week to go shopping because it was a great shopping mecca and they had great restaurants and it was just a really cool town we had a bowling alley we had an ice skating rink we had like 30 parks and just really good restaurants, really great clothes stores. But one of the, my favorite places to go was this place called Kensington Deli. And they have been around forever and they're still there. I mean, they were there when I was a little kid. I don't know when they opened, but they're probably there over 50 years. And it's this small place and um, it's a Jewish deli and they have hot dogs in the window on like a flat top, like so they're really snappy and delicious. And I would always go in there with friends or my mom or my brother, and I would get a hot dog, a little snappy, thin, you know, Hebrew national dog, I'm getting chills again, and a potato knish and a black cherry soda. And that was like Dr. Brown's black cherry. It was like my favorite thing. And um, anyway, so I, whenever I think of a potato knish, I think of Kensington Deli and anyone who is from Great Neck or the surrounding um, area knows that place because it's it's such a great establishment and they have turkey off the frame there they have brisket sandwiches and and you know a countertop and then just a couple booths and I brought Parker there um, a couple of years ago and he was, I think that was the first time you had a knish yeah right? it was yeah it was yeah so super fun. Okay, so we're just going to brown these. And again, I, you know, you could put bacon in here, you could put scallions, you could put mushrooms, you could put spinach, whatever you like, right? It's really what you want. But we're just going to go with the classic. Okay. Let those cook. Now I'm going to add about two tablespoons of chicken stock just to deglaze the pan a little bit. Now if you don't want to add chicken stock, if you're vegetarian, um, Roddy, and you want to make this for your family, um, you can just add water, you can add vegetable stock. You don't even have to add the stock, but it just, for me, it helps um, soften the onions a little bit more quickly and it adds another layer of flavor. You know how I love my layers of flavor. So we're just gonna cook those a little bit more. And basically once our potatoes are soft throughout, where we can pierce them with a paring knife and they're really soft, we're gonna drain them. We're gonna mash them 
Um, and we're going to add the onions, and we're basically going to make a, a small amount of mashed potatoes. I'm so excited. Jimmy gave us a... Jimmy says happy Hanukkah. He's yeah. blue and white, too. He said that, yeah, he gave us a peace sign. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. When you went to the bridge. guys so we sauteed our onions we cooked our potatoes till they're soft and we'll get to that in a minute but now we want to make the dough that is wrapped around the potato mixture that that holds the finish together and it's really simple so I have some flour we're gonna put that in a food processor I have some baking powder and then I have a half a cup of seltzer water that's cold and some apple cider vinegar and some salt, okay? So we're gonna mix that together. And we're gonna add this. Into the food processor. And you can double this recipe if you wanna make more. And let me pulse this. And it's pretty much coming right together, but we're also gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, so that looks great. We're going to take it out. Okay, so once, see how it came together like that? But we wanna knead it a little bit. So I'm gonna take some bench flour, put it on my cutting board, and we're just gonna remove this dough. You don't have to put gloves on, but I did, because I have my, my good wedding ring on, and I realized I didn't wanna get dough in my ring, so I'm just wearing gloves for this. Okay, so we're gonna move this around and you wanna knead this for about two or three minutes until it's really smooth and elastic and like kind of like a baby's bottom, right? Really, really nice and pliable. And then what we wanna do is, and I'm using the, the heel of my hand to kind of soften it and turn it, soften and turn it. If it starts sticking a little, just add a little more flour. Um, so we're, we're gonna do this for about two or three minutes and then we're gonna let it rest. You wanna let it rest for at least one hour and you know, up to overnight is fine. But at least one hour you want it to chill and relax in the fridge. So once we're done, we'll, we'll roll this in, uh, we'll put it into a circle, um, a nice firm ball, and then we will cover it with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for an hour at least, okay? Um, now I made another one before so that you don't have to wait an hour, okay? We can just get right to it. So that's feeling really nice. And this this will yield like four to six knishes, okay, depending on how big you wanna make them. Okay. A little bit more flour. Sticking. Really nice, really nice and smooth. Okay. I have a piece of plastic here. Okay, and we'll just cover that up nice and tight so no air gets in. I'm gonna put that in my fridge just like that let it rest okay in the meantime we can make our potato mixture so let me bring this over here 
So what I did was I cooked these potatoes until they were soft and then I drained them. And then I put them on the flame for about a minute to get that excess water out. Now to that, I wanna add about two tablespoons of chicken fat or schmaltz, okay? Now this has incredible flavor. If you don't have chicken fat or you don't wanna use chicken fat and keep it vegetarian, then you could just add olive oil, okay? And then here are my beautiful onions, okay? So we're gonna add all of those. And we'll add some salt and pepper. So you can buy chicken fat in the uh, supermarket. So I bought this, it's Empire Rendered Chicken Fat. It's a nice product, it's kosher. Um, but you can also, if you, if you make a whole roasted chicken or any kind of chicken at all, and you have some leftover fat in the pan, just drain it and save it and put it in the refrigerator and it lasts up to a month and you can use it for cooking many, many things. It's a great flavor. Okay, so I'm just using a potato masher. You see how easy that was and how fast. Let me taste it for Flav. Mm. It already tastes like a knish. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Okay, let me add a little bit more salt and pepper. Okay, you don't want to over mix it too much. It, it'll tend to get gummy. Let me taste it one more time. Parks, you want to taste it? I do. I'm going to take that. Okay. Okay. Mm. Good? Huh. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to clean yeah. up because I'm going to roll out my dough on this board. So we're going to just clear everything and we'll come back. Okay. See you soon. Okay. So we cleaned everything up. I have my potato mixture right here. I have some bench flour. I have a circle cutter. I have one egg that we're going to use for egg wash in a minute. And I have my, my dough that I prepared earlier. Okay. So that's chilled. So let's first start by putting some bench flour down. Okay, and I'm just gonna coat all the sides of this dough. It can tend to be a little bit sticky, okay? Now you wanna roll this out as thin as possible, okay? Okay, so we've got a nice amount of flour on there, and let's start rolling. Beautiful, it's really a beautiful dough. Okay, now we're gonna turn it sideways. You know, when you're using a rolling pin, you wanna use even pressure with your hands and you really wanna let the rolling pin do the work. A lot of people, when they're using a roll pin, rolling pin, I see them kind of like banging the rolling pin around and you don't have to do that, okay? So just, you know, using a good amount of flour is always helpful because you don't want it to stick. And you can guide the rolling pin and kind of keep it as even as you like just by using different pressure, okay? To make it even all the way around. Now I'm gonna roll this up on my rolling pin because I wanna turn it over one more time. We're so gonna have a little bit of flour down here. We don't wanna add too much. You don't wanna incorporate too much flour into that dough, okay? So now I'm gonna turn it on this side. It's just an easy way to transfer your dough. Okay, that looked great. Yeah. So beautiful. Okay. So 
So the other thing that we can do is just kind of brush this dough and get that excess flour off. And I'm gonna turn it over one more time just so we can get the flour off the other side, okay? See that? Okay, great. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna take my circle cutter and I think we're gonna try and make eight. Let's see if we can get eight out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. If you don't have a circle cutter like that, you can use um, a jar, the lid from a jar. And we can also um, save this and make more. Okay. So we'll leave that there for now. But for right now, this looks good. Okay. So. Okay. So we're going to add about a tablespoon to the center and you can make these whatever size you want. You can make them appetizer size for hors d'oeuvres. You can make it like triple the size of this. And that's, this was one Idaho potato. I mean, the yield from this is pretty big. And we're just gonna bring the dough up around the potato. Okay, mm. see that? Kind of pinch it together, okay? See? And of course you could make, you know, a whole bunch of these and freeze them. And then, you know, when you're sitting home on a cold night and you want a little snack, you just pop them out of the freezer, put them in your toaster oven, little applesauce or a little ketchup, a little mustard, a little brown gravy. Mm. Right? Okay, last one. Okay, cute. Okay, so I have a small sheet pan with some foil on it and some parchment paper. I'm just gonna line them up, give them a little bit of space. Okay, and then the last step is we want to brush them with some egg wash. Nice color on there. This helps um, Give them a beautiful golden brown appearance. And we're gonna bake these at 375 until they're golden brown. It should take about maybe 12 to 15 minutes. Put them in the oven and then Parker and I are going to taste them when they come out. Can't wait. Hey guys, so look at these beautiful pillows can, of love. Can you tip it? I can tip it a little bit. A little bit oh my god, they look so good. good. Okay, so they're out of the oven. Mm -hmm. Are you ready, Parks? Yeah. Okay, well, first off, before you taste anything, we got to enjoy this nice ice cold <laughs> Dr. Brown's black cherry. 
I cannot have Dr. Brown's dye of black cherries. It doesn't work for me. I have to go original. And I don't have these often, but when I do, I find it extremely enjoyable. <laughs> I never had this growing up. Did you ever have it the in life? The first time I had it is when you took me to that deli. To Kensington and, and Deli. Yeah. And I had to get my Dr. Brown. You, you had me have a taste it. And they it. have Dr. Brown's black cherry in a can, which I prefer over the bottle. Really? Yes. I don't know why. Okay. Cheers. To Dr. Brown. To Dr. Brown. Ugh. Heaven. It's delicious, although... It tastes a little bit like the cough syrup that my mother used to make me. Oh, don't ruin it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked it. You did. Yeah, the cough syrup. I was always like, oh, okay. No, it doesn't taste cherry. like that. It tastes like black cherry. It's delicious. Okay. Okay. Let's get going. Okay. So look at these little pillows of love. So cute. Okay, so I have three different dipping sauces. And... If we had applesauce, we'd have four, but I have some brown gravy that's left over from Thanksgiving, oh. which is like my fave. I have some whole grain mustard, which I know you Great. love, yeah. and some ketchup. Bandwitz. And you could also use, you know, applesauce would be lovely. Yeah. You're cutting it open? I'm cutting it open. Okay. Oh, oh my God. So I'm going to start with a little mustard first. Let's see oh. how I like that. I'm going to do my gravy last because I'm going to spill it on the plate. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to start with ketchup since you're going that way. Okay. Mm. That's great. It's great? Yeah. Mm. So after school, would you go and get a knish? Yeah. Yeah. Not so much after school, but like on Saturdays when we go into town, mm -hmm. we get like either a slice of pizza or a knish and a hot dog. You know, it was the kind of place, it's not, we could go there for lunch or dinner, of course, but like at three o'clock, you're just like a little hungry and you go in there and you get a quick hot dog and a knish. Oh. You know? Wow. I'm gonna go for some gravy. I'll take some too, right there. And then we'll have all of them from that one knish. And how many knishes do you, do you eat normally? Well, these are small, so yeah. I mean, I could probably eat three of these, but three of these is probably equal to like one large. Oh. Mm. That's great. I'm great with the gravy. It's the best. Yeah. So if you had to rate this dish from one to 10, what would you rate it? Be kind. <laughs> I call it a nine. Ooh. Up there. Delicious. And not a ten because I would normally need something else with it. You know, I'd want some meat with it, like a hot dog or something. <laughs> you know? So it's it's not it's, it's not like a whole meal, you know, or a dish like a chicken pot pie that could be a whole meal. Mm. But this is really good. Really good. This is delicious, sweetie. This is really good. Thank you. You're this welcome. Is a treat. It's a new thing. Happy Hanukkah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Festival of Happy lights. Happy Hanukkah. Really? Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. So good. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Let's see. Just in case you get one look at that. Mm. So pretty. They're so cute. Gorgeous. <laughs> okay, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Happy Hanukkah. It's be fun to make with the kids, but even more fun to eat. Happy Hanukkah, Chef Lisa. And he's rated it a nine. <laughs> Must be the black cherry soda. Yeah, it helped. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Really nice. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. See you soon. See you soon.